This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk about a very big breakthrough that has happened in Bitcoin recently, and that's called splicing. But in order to discuss that, we have to do a little background on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So just like both the internet, which scaled in layers, and the traditional financial system, which exists in layers, Bitcoin itself also scales using layers. And the most well-known and developed example of a layer two that's being built on top of the Bitcoin network is the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is very fast. It offers very, very low fees, usually a penny or less to send a transaction. The native money of the Lightning Network is also Bitcoin or Satoshis. One Bitcoin is equal and can be subdivided into 100 million Satoshis. The Lightning Network is not controlled by any private company like Lightning Labs. In fact, Lightning is an open, permissionless protocol that allows anyone to build on top of it or to send or receive money using it. And the Lightning Network uses these bi-directional payment channels that look like this. And you won't normally have names on either side, but well, you will have a Lightning node on either side. So for example, here, Christina on the left has 100,000 sats on her side of her channel. Bob has 50,000 sats. And then what happens is Christina sends 10,000 sats over here in the next step. So now she only has 90,000 sats and Bob has 60,000 sats. Christina then receives 20,000 sats from Bob, and now Bob only has 40,000 sats, while Christina has 110,000 sats. So these are these payment channels, and within the channel, you can send the money back and forth very easily. To open up one of these Lightning channels, you and someone else need to make a two of two multi-sig transaction where two people or two signatures have to sign using the Bitcoin network. So this is done on-chain, and this will lock up Bitcoin on-chain and then fund that channel that you've just set up with that Bitcoin. Whatever Bitcoin you add ends up on your side of the payment channel, and then whatever Bitcoin the other person adds ends up on their side of the payment channel. It's important to note that no additional Bitcoin is created in the process, so there's no additional monetary inflation. This does not increase the supply of Bitcoin beyond 21 million because you have this locked up Bitcoin sitting on chain that can't be used for anything while it's being used on the Lightning Network. So after you've set up this payment channel, that you can then send, send money back and forth in that Lightning channel, as we saw between Bob and Christina. In fact, the Lightning Network is made up of thousands and thousands of these two-party payment channels. So you might have a payment channel, as we saw between Christina and Bob, and then Bob might have a payment channel with John. And so if Christina wants to send money to John, wants to send some Satoshis to John, she can send it through Bob across her channel, and then Bob will send it over to John. Now, at some point, Christina and Bob may choose to quote unquote settle up using the bar tab analogy where you give the bartender your credit card and then everyone has drinks and then you pay the, pay the total at the end of the evening. You can settle up on Lightning by choosing to close that channel. Christina and Bob could choose to close that channel by doing a reverse transaction on the Bitcoin base layer. And at that point, each person will get the sats that were on their side of the channel at the time of the close. So if Christina ended up with 110,000 sats, that's what she would get. Now, either person can close the channel whenever they want and claim the sats that rightly belong to them. And all of this is cryptographically enforced so that one side of the channel cannot become a bad actor and steal the Bitcoin that's not theirs. A lot of ship coiners or altcoiners will tell you that the Lightning Network is vaporware. This is propaganda. There's actually another, nothing further from the truth. Right now, we have almost 5,000 Bitcoin locked up on the Lightning Network. That's $143 million worth of capital on the network. We have almost 15,000 nodes and almost 66,000 channels. And we can see here a global map where the Lightning Network extends all across the world, North America, South America, Europe. Europe, Asia, Africa, etc. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. That really, really helps out the channel. Also hit the like button and leave a comment or question or suggestion for a future video topic. Now, Lightning Network transactions are not broadcast to the entire network, unlike the Bitcoin network. In other words, on the Lightning Network, you just have the money moving through these individual channels and the entire global network is not notified. So as a result, no one really knows how many transactions are actually taking place on the Lightning Network. The only channels mapped out that we just saw in that diagram, that live diagram, are the channels that have publicly announced themselves and that are connected to nodes that are connected to mempool, mempool.spaces, Lightning node. We can see this is put out by mempool.space. So there may actually be many, many other payment channels that we don't know about that aren't visible on this map. And payment volume 
and money locked up on the Lightning Network may also be much higher than we think. In fact, Lightning Node A and Lightning Node B could be sending millions and millions of dollars of Bitcoin back and forth to each other every month and we would never know about it. And those totals would not be included in this capacity number. This is just Bitcoin locked up in the channels. It doesn't tell you the volume of payments. So the volume of payments on the Lightning Network could in fact already be in the billions and billions of dollars. Also, Bitcoin's taproot upgrade, which took place, I believe it was November of 2021, this ensures that Lightning channel openings and closings, these multi-sig, two of two multi-sig transactions, as we said, the taproot upgrade ensures that these transactions look just like regular simple spends on chain. So that provides even more privacy and helps to frustrate the chain surveillance firms that are trying to track the movement of Bitcoin across not just the Bitcoin network on chain, but also the Lightning network. Now, one issue with Lightning channels, and here, here's where splicing is about to enter. One issue with Lightning channels is that there's a lot of rebalancing involved with running a channel. So to demonstrate this, let's say that I have a Lightning channel open with my local grocery store. This is not a realistic example, but it will help to illustrate it. In fact, what happens is you would just have a Lightning wallet and you would be transacting. You wouldn't need to have a special channel with every store that you deal with. But for the purposes of this example, let's say I have a Lightning channel open with my local grocery store. In this case, I'm usually the one spending the money, sending it to the grocery store in exchange for food. And then I rarely need any refunds. So most of the money is flowing from my side of the channel to the grocery store side of the channel. And thus most of the money in the channel ends up on their side as I buy groceries every single week. Now, if I want to add more money to my side of the channel, I could try to send more sats to myself if those sats are already somewhere on the Lightning Network. But if they're not already on the Lightning Network and I can't get someone else to send me some sats on the Lightning Network, then the grocery store and I will need to agree to close our Lightning Channel, wait for me to add more sats from on-chain, and then reopen the channel using those additional sats. Now that requires two on-chain transactions, closing the channel and then reopening the channel. And this can get quite expensive, especially when Bitcoin transaction fees are high, as they have been for much of 2023. And it also means that my channel, our channel with the grocery store is down for an hour. Six confirmations is usually, I believe, what you have to wait for the Bitcoin to be locked up permanently on the Bitcoin on-chain and then be able to use it in your Lightning channel. Here's another problem that needs to be solved. Unified wallets like Moon and Phoenix, they're called unified because they allow you to transact both on-chain on the Bitcoin network as well as on the Lightning network while they show you a single total Bitcoin balance, which is very convenient. These unified wallets, how are they supposed to swap back and forth between on-chain Bitcoin and Bitcoin that's held on the Lightning Network. This is a real problem. Moon, we've talked about this wallet before, solves this problem by holding your Bitcoin on chain and then just doing a submarine swap when you need to send via the Lightning Network. But Moon's model, their wallet model breaks down in a high transaction fee environment as we've seen this year. And I'll link to this blog post about how, how submarine swaps work on the Moon wallet. So this is where splicing becomes very interesting. Splicing is this new technology that allows, that gives you the ability to easily add or remove sats from a lightning channel, from a lightning payment channel, without having to close and then reopen the channel using transactions on the base layer. Closing and reopening the channel would require two on-chain transaction fees, which as we said, can be problematic in a high fee environment. So if you splice in, that means you're adding funds to a lightning channel. If you splice out, that means you're removing funds from a Lightning channel. And splicing makes it much easier to design Bitcoin wallets, unified wallets, that can easily send and receive and hold Bitcoin both on chain and via the Lightning network. And this will mean lower fees for people who use those wallets as a result. In other words, splicing helps to make Bitcoin on chain and Bitcoin on the Lightning network much more fungible. And that in itself is a huge innovation. For example, you can make an on-chain payment using Bitcoin that is held on the Lightning Network, or you can make a Lightning payment using Bitcoin that, it, that is being held on-chain. And this would all be happening behind the scenes. This is more a topic for developers, but it's always interesting to see how this technology is moving forward and how it's going to make it much easier on the consumer side of things. You will also be able to combine your splicing with other people's splicing for even lower total fees and greater privacy. So it's possible to do collaborative transactions, something like a coin join, but using the Lightning Network instead. This is also splicing is going to be very big for what are called LSPs, Lightning Service Providers. Let's say you have this huge connected Lightning node, 
Lightning Network node, and you need to constantly manage the liquidity in your channels and rebalance them. You need to be constantly opening and closing channels to add or subtract sats from these channels, and that can get really expensive with those opening and closing fees on chain. But using splicing, you can easily and more cheaply add sats from on chain or from another Lightning channel that you control. This ultimately means lower fees for you and me as well if we use these Lightning service providers, these LSPs, whether indirectly or directly, uh, indirectly through other services. So splicing really is a huge breakthrough and I will continue to cover it on this channel. It's very exciting to see the Lightning Network continue to grow and also to continue to see these new bridges between the Lightning Network and the underlying Bitcoin network. If you want to do a little bit deeper dive, I'd encourage you to check out Stefan Levera's recent podcast with Dusty Damon on splicing and how it works. You can also follow Dusty on Twitter. He's the creator of this new version of splicing, which is very exciting. I believe he's actually being funded as well by OpenSats. So if this is something that you like to see and you have some money to spend or to donate, I'd encourage you to donate to OpenSats because it gets spread across really worthy products like this that help to increase the value of all of our Bitcoin and the Bitcoin network and help to spread adoption. So OpenSats.org is definitely a good thing to check out. If you want to check out a wallet that is already using splicing, I believe only the Android version is using splicing now, but they're going to roll out the iOS version shortly. That is the Phoenix wallet, which is a mobile wallet you can hold on your phone. This is something that I need to cover in a future video, and I hope to cover it soon, but they are going to be rolling out uh, splicing as part of their back end for their wallet. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.